I am Costanza and welcome to my channel A Medic Abroad and don't forget before I even begin to like this video to subscribe and share this video and get the word out there I'm actually a graduate from Plovdiv Medical University in Bulgaria and after that I did some work in Aberdeen as a SHO I'm now currently working as an SHO in a hospital in London going through different rotations my first rotation was renal medicine and now I have moved on to my second rotation which is in an acute respiratory ward but sometimes I do do some shifts in the emergency department as well as AMU depending on what my rota is like for that week so I thought you know what having been through the process of studying abroad and coming back to my hometown of London to work in the NHS it's probably good to talk about some good old tips to help you out along the way. If I can do it, you can do it too. So welcome to my channel if you have not already met me before. And after this video, don't forget to check out my other videos where I do lots of different vlogs on how it actually is on the ward. So today, I'm going to give five tips on your first day working as a junior doctor in the NHS. So... I've got my notes written down here on my phone and so if I might be looking down you'll, that's the reason why. So the first thing I would say is what I found really helpful is because of my personality I like to write things down. So on your first day make sure you have a little notebook which can fit in your scrub pocket or in your little um uh, if you have a little bag that you walk around with or that can fit into your coat pocket whatever you're using bring a little notebook and in there write everything you need to know I wrote down where stuff was located I wrote down certain medications that they use on that particular ward for example my first job was in the renal department and one of the jobs, one of the medications that they were using quite often was a immunosuppressant called tacrolimus. And having not known about that specific medication before, I decided to write it down. Any information on it that comes up a lot, especially if you're on the renal ward, for example. Now I'm on the respiratory ward, I might see certain medications like dexamethasone, which is a uh, a medication that we typically see in general however you use it a bit more often so write medications in here write where things are write protocols and also if you're having a discussion with your consultant or registrar even other junior doctors and you learn something new or something where you were you made a mistake write it down okay let's say you prescribe the wrong milligrams someone told you write it down Let's say you ask a question about what specific medication do they give when the renal function is very low, write it down. And you'll realise that the more you write things down, the more you'll remember. And there's also something you can refer back to. And thirdly, if you're doing an e-portfolio, it might be something that you've written down that can remind you to write something of reflection or to do with one of your cases that you're presenting um, in terms of one of the uh, whole base discussions you could talk about for example so write everything down everything I even brought another book with me to my new job in London because just because it's an NHS doesn't mean they do things exactly the same way for example different trusts use different antibiotics depending on what they tend to see in their respective communities the second thing i'd say is you have to fake confidence if you walk in and you look unconfident and you feel unconfident you will be unconfident it doesn't mean you're going to be pompous it doesn't mean that you're going to be cocky but it does mean you have to walk with authority on your first day and from there on because people can sense your energy. Let's say you go into your patient and you look unsure, you look uncomfortable, you look worried, you look like you're in the wrong place. Then obviously, let's think, if you was a patient and your doctor walked in like that, you're not going to feel very confident in your clinical um, in your clinical services. So try and do that and just take, tell yourself all the time when you're walking, when you're talking, when you're doing things, be confident. 
that's all you need to do the third point is organization is key now I don't know if you've watched any of my previous videos but when I have a patient list of jobs at night time or daytime I write three columns I wish I had a picture of me now but hopefully I can show you one later on the first column has the patient's bed the second column has the patient's details so their name and typically the hospital number why because one people move around so you might say i need a job for bed two but by the time you get to the end of the day they've moved to bed six and you might do a blood culture on the wrong person and number two i do put the bed name i mean the bed number the patient's details and their hospital number because it's quicker for me let's say i need to go and chase a chest x-ray i don't have to go fl flying through lots of documentation to look for their number i can just have it in front of me write it down onto a paper on my list and then i can use that when i'm searching for the chest x-ray much quicker because it's to hand so make sure that's organized write down all your jobs and prioritize based upon roles who are acutely ill and the jobs which are more in um in more urgent so this is discharge summaries why because beds are we don't have an infinite amount of beds and it's also things like someone's desaturating someone is very ill someone is um their blood pressure is super high they're very tacky lots of those different things if it's in those types of groups of jobs do those first and obviously scans it's best to order a scan as quickly as possible because as you probably will guess when you spend time in the NHS it takes a while for it to be done and especially if it's very important you don't want it to be moving on to the next day all other jobs can be pushed to the end of the day and if not you could pass it on to the night team if it's important to the patient's care at night and or and slash or you can pass it on to the day team for the next day if you're not there or if you're there you can carry it on tomorrow number four okay cut yourself some slack there are no stupid questions ask everything because if you don't ask you'll never know and what might seem very stupid might actually be very important for a specific patient or for the NHS as a whole arcs 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 no matter how you feel no matter if you feel stupid no matter if you feel like it's unnecessary always ask questions so for example i got myself a couple books because sometimes even though it's something which you've done so many times in medical school and you've done throughout your career you still forget things so even if you get the basics of how to look at abgs for example or how to make ECGs and um, how to um, interpret ECGs because these are things that you might forget it's fine to look at stuff to check things to look at information you're going to get better at ABGs the more you do them you're going to get better at venipuncture the more you do it and it, what really helps also is I have this folder for example this was a folder I made in my first job in the NHS and what it actually is is a printout of protocols for different diseases and disorders I tend to encounter in that ward so for example I was on the renal ward so what type of things did I see a lot on the renal ward hyperkalemia so I have protocol for that in here ACS I have protocol for that in here um, uh, renal transplant patients so I have uh, that in here as well and I divided it based upon different systems as well so for example cardiology you have stuff in that I had sections in here for kidneys like acute kidney injuries and sections also here for antibiotics because like I said before different trusts use different antibiotics for different reasons so I hope those five things have helped you and just believe in yourself, take on these things on board and I wish you all the best with your job on your first day as a junior doctor in the NHS. Once again, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share this video with everyone you know, people who have just graduated, people that will be graduating and people who are even working already because we can all help each other learn.
So thank you for watching this video. Bye.